what's up guys welcome back to the channel guys your boy ryan lfc back again guys another top shell video for you guys today in this video we're going to do a combine level jamaica versus united states combine level we will see how many united states they get into the team we're going to see how many jamaican they get in the team also viewers make sure you guys share your thought down in the comment section it's very important give us your combine level down in the comment section if you're near around here make sure you hit that subscribe button like the video but before we jump into the video i want to ask chris what are you doing today my brother i'm good man i'm good i'm um, you know it's always good to um do these type of videos and preview this game it's very important game for us so um we can do a combined 11 see how much jamaicans and how much um usa players get into this combined 11 most definitely but before we get into the game the united states coming off a big victory over mexico that was a very good performance the best the united states play this this world cup qualifies so far i remember united states beat uh mexico this is going to be the three time this year in the gold cup yeah. final and also in the nation league final so pretty decent for the united states they have a lot of confidence going to this jamaica game but Jamaica ja against El Salvador. When you look at both teams, Jamaica and the United States, what are your thoughts on both teams? But before we get to Jamaica, what are your thoughts on the United States? Um, this is actually a very shock result for me, uh, to be honest, because remember, um, Christian Pulisic is coming off the bench. We know Sergina Des didn't play, Gia Reina didn't play, so there were some omissions as well as um also, there were players that were not fully fit in Christian Pulisic. And also, Zach Steffen was not there as well. Of course, he's the backup goalkeeper at Manchester City under Pep Guardiola. So there were some omissions. And then what made it even more shock, shocking for me is that Mexico had a strong team. Um, Chucky Lozano, Hector Herrera, Alvarez, Raul Jimenez, Corona, um, Roma, and then, of course, Ochoa that was there so they had a strong team against the united states a stronger team in my opinion but they lost they got blanked two nil uh, i think that the the usa team they they're just Beralta is just basically making them into a machine that constantly turns even when they lose a spoke they still continue to turn effectively and that is why they're at the top of the CONCACAF table right now. So I'm actually very shocked. But, I mean, USA is trying to make up for last time for what they did and not qualifying for the 2018 World Cup in Russia. So uh, they're, they're doing some damage right now in the region. Most definitely. What are your thoughts on the reggae boys? Should have walked away with three points. Um, there were some players that should have started for me. Um, of course, I think that... The, the starting eleven that was started with was not creative enough. Um, there were some players that I thought should have done way, way better, did not do um, well. You know, some of those players, Bobby Reed, um, I thought that Kemar Roof was a lot of times more absent than constant in the game. Um, also, Shemar Bowser Nicholson, you know, was not um, was not constant in the game as well. He, he I believe, had his, his poorest performance um since the world cup qualifying has started um so and, and that cost us the game you know michael antonio coming on and scoring proves why he's such an important piece to to the reggae boys if they're to qualify for the world cup in qatar next year and he's just showing you how good he can be he's an unformed west ham player he's one of the unformed west ham players you know have his top five in the league in terms of scoring goals he's just a beast and he showed you why. Got the ball, originally lost it a little bit, but strength and speed got it back and just dinked it over the keeper with just finesse, finesse and class. That was a classy finish from Mikel Antonio. But, you know, Corey Burke lost the ball. Um, he should have done better to get it back. And then we were just standing still, just allowing the, the El Salvadorian player to just set himself, cross it, and then boom, right in the goal, Liam Moore, I think, should have defended it a little bit better. But, um, I mean, it's one point. We didn't lose. That's the only positive I can take from that game is that we didn't lose. We should have gotten three points, but we didn't lose. But we need to just go back now 
and just try to take three points it's going to be difficult you know because you know with a lot of omissions as i said before with the usa team and they were still managed they still managed to beat mexico and keep a clean sheet at that then trust me it's 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 going to be a difficult task but they are away from home they play stronger at home so they're away from home it's not necessarily going to be you know a, a, a walk through for the united states if the starting 11 is correct so we'll just hope that we can get three points from this game and maybe just inch a little bit closer most definitely so let's move on to the combine level Andre Blake, fantastic goalkeeper, yeah. done in Philadelphia, done great thing, individual award in the MLS. When you look at the United States, they always produce some very good goalkeeper. As you said, they have the backup goalkeeper at Manchester City. Cannot even get a look into this United States team. That simply means they have good goalkeeper over the years. We can go through the American goalkeeper. They are fantastic goalkeeper. We can say that. We can give them credit for that. But who are you going with in between the stick in this combined level? And before we get into the goalkeeper, what's the formation we're using in this combined level? Hmm. Now, I, 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 I was kind of wrestling with this as it pertains to um, a starting 11 um, in terms of the formation. I think that 4 3 3 can be a very good formation combining with these players, you know, um, based on what, what they can do. Um, I think a 4-3-3 with a combined Jamaica squad and American squad, based on the players that I would want to be in this combined 11, if we start a 4-3-3, there's no CONCACAF team that could beat us in this region. Most definitely. Mm, so 4-3-3 so is for me. 4 3 three. Okay, no problem. We'll go with that. But who, will you, who would you pick in the goal, though? To me, to me, to me, um, and to be honest, it's a foregone conclusion for me. I don't think... I, I just think that based on the fact that Kayla Navas has been inconsistent for Costa Rica, for me, I just think that Andre Blake is the best in CONCACAF. There's no body that's better than him. And when you look at the fact that he has been named among, among the best in the world, Mark andre Ter Stegen, Golaski from the Bundesliga, um, Jano Black from Atletico Madrid, um, of course, Kayla Navas, who plays, who applies it straight to PSG, Thibaut Courtois from Real Madrid. So I think it's a foregone conclusion for me. Um, Steven, who played for, for the United States in between the stick, um, Jack Steve, um, Jack Stephen, who, who, who plays in between the stick, even though he is um, the man that is um, the second fiddle to, um, to the starting goalkeeper, Edison, I don't think that he comes in in front of Andre Blake. Andre Blake on his average day can make better saves and has a better reaction time than Zach Stephen. So, uh, of course, I would have to put Andre Blake in between the sticks. Most definitely. I have to agree with you. You said it all. I don't need to say much about Andre Blake. We know what he can offer and I know he can steal a game from any team in world football when he play on the day. Andre definitely. Blake. So, let's move into the center back and this is where jamaica have a lot of good center back right. probably many people will say no because they can't see it in a lot of goal we don't know if it's a coaching issue our but we have proper decent center back and i don't think kankakov have jamaica have some of the best defender so who do you be partner with what's a partnership would you go with all right this is the one that was conflicting um for me I, I was looking at a lot of different um, centre-back pairings. Do we go for full Jamaican? Do we go for full American? Do we kind of switch it up a little bit? And, it, I mean, it, to me, I think Zimmerman should be in there um, for the centre-back role for me, from America. Um, I think he has been a stalwart for, for USA in this CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers. But to me, it's it's a toss up for me between Liam Moore and and Damian Lowe. And the reason why I say between Liam Moore and Damian Lowe, I am looking at appearances. If it was just based on just quality alone, I would have definitely picked Zimmerman to go with Ethan Pinnock because he's very very versed 
He's a very good defender in the Premier League for, 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 for Brentford. So in terms of pairing and appearances, I'm probably going to go with um, Damian Nanalo and Zimmerman as the centre-back pairings. Well, Ethan Pinnock is not in the team, so I can't even mention Ethan Pinnock. But right. I will stick with you. I will go with them at centre-back. But this is very tricky. Um, I don't think the United States have good left-back, but I know they have Dex very good going forward, but mm -hmm. not the greatest in defence. But the full-back, who would you go with in the left-back and the right-back full-back right now? There's a reason why um, Taximan Lawrence has been a stalwart in the MLS for so many years. He's been in the All-Star many times. He's been the MLS team of the year many times, too many times that we can count. So I think that Taximan more so has good days than bad days. So I'll put Taximan Lawrence as my starting left back. Most definitely. I think Kemar Taxi Lawrence, when he play for Toronto FC, fantastic, but... At Jamaica, I don't know what happened to Taxi. I don't think, I don't know if he's tired, but he must have not lived up to expectation. But he deserves to be in this combined level. So I have to agree with you on that. This is where the problem will be. Jamaica right. have it difficult to find a right back to nail on that spot. Sometimes we play Alvas Paul, sometimes we play O'Neill Fisher, sometimes Mariapa. But when you look at the United States team, who would you choose in this right back position, though? Ah, uh, I mean, DeAndre Yedlin, of course, you, you can't deny what he can do, DeAndre Yedlin. Um, plays for Newcastle. You know, I, I think sometimes Newcastle have been dealt with a raw deal. That's why you don't really see the true form of DeAndre no. Yedlin. He, he, leave, he leave Newcastle and playing for Galatasaray. Right, Galatasaray, right. Sorry about that. So, DeAndre Yedlin, of course, you'd want to put him in the team, but when you look at the fact that we have a player like Javine Brown, who has been fantastic for, for Vancouver Whitecaps, he has been one of the, 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 the shining stars in, in Vancouver um, in such a dim light with, with the inconsistencies that they've had this season. Uh, but if, if we want to go for appearances again, I would have to put DeAndre Yedlin in that, in that right-back role. Um, of course, he, he was playing for Newcastle, now applies his streak in the Turkish League for Galatasaray. So I would go with DeAndre Yedlin. Um, Alvas Powell, his defensive mindset has gone completely. And and I think um, a lot of, and, and I think in my opinion, injuries has a lot to do with it. A lot of times you don't come back the same when you have a significant injury. And I think Alvas Powell definitely has not come back. The, the, the Portland Timbers, Alvas Powell is not the Alvas Powell that we know now. The Portland Timbers, Alvas Powell was way better defensively. He's not good defensively now. So I would put DeAndre Yedlin for that right back role for the United States to represent. Most definitely. I think Yedlin done him stuff at Newcastle over the years. Um, I think find it really difficult to get in this United States team whenever they explain. But I think he deserves. I think he better than what we have at this moment. So I will give Yedlin that right back position. But this is where you get cheeky. This is where you get cheeky because... I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, let us see. Let's go into the midfield. <laughs> what is the midfield you have? All right, my three-man midfield. I have two choices. Um, so you can you can choose whichever you want, but I have two choices. I have Anthony Grant, definitely, Weston McKinney, and Ravel Morrison. Those are that's one option. That's one option for my three-man midfield. Weston McKinney. I think that we fail to understand how important Western McKinney was last season for Juventus, for them to qualify for the Champions League this season. And Schalke, the year before. All right. So we know we should, we need to understand how important Western McKinney is. There's a reason that they searched in the Bundesliga, found Western McKinney, and decided to bring him over to the old ladies. So that that's my first option. Western McKinney, Anthony Grant and Ravel Morrison. My second option is Anthony Grant, same way. Musa. And this is the reason why I choose Musa. In a midfield that has the experience and the skill of Hector Herrera, um, Alvarez, and Romo, he was bossing that midfield for the United States. 
The reason why I left out Tyler Adams is because I think that Musa, um, Jonas Musa, stood out. Of course, you know, he Musa applies his trade to Valencia, the 18-year-old. And as an 18-year-old, he was boss in the midfield against Mexico. So I would have Anthony Grant, um, Jordan Musa for my second choice, and Ravel Morrison. So can pick whichever you'd want. For me, I have to agree with you on the first one. I think what Anthony Grant can do inside the midfield, especially of Ravel Marcy and Kennedy side of him, that is very good. Two number eight on both sides. That's going to cause trouble for any team. And then you have Anthony Grant behind him, mopping up the danger, doing the dirty works. I think that's a very, very good team, you know, bro. I think that's a very, very good team. Very good midfield. I'm going with your first midfield option. I like that. I like that. I love Ravel Morrison. I think Grant is the best holding midfielder right now in Kankakov, in my opinion. So, yeah, definitely. For me, and Kennedy is very well for, very good for United States. So, play mm -hmm. good in the Bundesliga a couple years ago for, um, for Schalke. Uh, that's why I'm getting the move to go to the old lady. So, I have to agree with you on that. Let's move on to forward line forward line so right. this is where it kind of get cheeky you get a lot yeah. of cheeky cheeky but what do you have up your scene for the forward line all right so we we, we cost leon bailey and said that he wasn't necessarily playing effectively for jamaica i think that el salvador game he has mm. just he was just um unlucky i think that he attacked more which is what we needed from him in dash with some el salvadorian defender too and made it look easy in my opinion, especially for the first 15 minutes, we saw where had he continued to be inclusive in the attack, we would have had at least two, three goals in um in the first half against El Salvador. So I would have Leon Bailey on that right hand side. I would have him on the right hand side. As the striker, this is where it gets tricky for me. Because should you well, I'd put Bailey over the left hand side then. And uh, this is where it gets tricky. On the right-hand side, I would have Tim Weah. Of course, we all should know who his father is and what his father has brought to the game of football. George Weah, former Ballon d'Or winner, played for AC Milan. So I would have Tim Weah on the right. Pedri just seems so good so good in this World Cup qualifier so far, what he's been able to do. Roof, of course, got a goal for us, but he disappeared basically in the El Salvadorian game. Bowser had a, had a stinker against El Salvador. So if we're going off of the performance of the last game, I'd go for Pedri. So I'd have Leon Bailey on the left, Tim Weah on the right, and Pedri um, as a centre forward. No, Mikel Antonio? Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Of course. Of course. How could I forget? Um, so, Bailey on the left, Tim Weah on the right, and Mikel Antonio striking. Definitely. I think what Mikel Antonio brought to El Salvador proved why he should be starting in the Jamaican team. Strong player. Fast, quick enough. Very, very tactically aware of what is going on. And that basically all of that combined was the reason why we we got the goal against el salvador lost it a little bit went continued to fight maybe basically muscle the man off of the ball quick succession then went dragged it to his left and just dinked it with his right over the keeper so um thanks for reminding me about that how could i how could i forget that so that bailey on the left tim Weah on the right and Mikel Antonio striking. That's my front three. I agree with your front three. But, people, I don't want you guys to sleep on this young striker that play for the United States. Pedro, right. He's a baller. A He's a baller. And if Mikel Antonio didn't even in this squad, I would go with him playing at centre forward. Mikel Antonio has been fantastic for West Ham United and coming into this game. Brilliant. Pepe. Pepe is his name, not not Petri. Pepe. 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 
Yeah, yeah, it's good. But Mikel yeah, Antonio really for me. So viewers, that's our combine level. Give us your combine level down in the comment section. And also, don't forget to smash the like button. And also, I will pin Chris channel down in the comment section. So Chris going to drop a preview for the Jamaica game. So 9 p.m. tomorrow morning. You can go and check it out. And Chris also will share it in my community. It will, the channel will be down in the comment section and in the description. So thank you guys for watching. Really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit a like on the video and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, from your boy Ryan LFC and Chris, we like to say peace.